Guys, my background comes from making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but because I was in the worst position, I actually was in the best position. Why? Because pain sharpens listening. Because here's the bottom line, and this might be somewhat offensive to some of you, and I hope you don't take it that way. You're ready to divide. You're a fork and run. Either you choose to change or you choose to stay the same. You see, the valleys matured me, man, but the mountain tops inspired me. Look at this view. Doesn't this view inspire you? So you've probably heard me say plenty, plenty of times that I'm so thankful and grateful for the gift of entrepreneurship, getting involved in the insurance industry, for being able to obtain some form of wealth and financial freedom, right? It's probably one thing that you haven't heard me say a lot about, which is I'm so thankful for being broke. <laughs> so what am I talking about? You're saying, Matt, you're probably out of your mind. So please give me 20 minutes and I'll help a lot in this video, the power of broke. You see, there was a season in my life where I was absolutely just flat out, not making it, struggling financially, just leaving the military, just falling flat on my face, making money, losing money, making money, losing money, and I was just flat out broke. So in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'm going to share with you five reasons why I'm glad I was broke. Sorry, in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm G-Dot, steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger, just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven. So what's cracking, everybody? My name is my guy, Matt Paul here, hailing to you from Aruba. We're uh, camping out here at the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> Interesting cave back there, but uh, listen, I, uh, I'm excited about this episode because it's a subject that I think a lot of people don't like to talk about. A lot of people like to talk about their success, but they don't like to talk about their times of brokenness. And so it's my attempt to be as open and transparent with you in this video about five reasons why I'm glad. I was broke. But before we get started, I just want to mention to you, our next goal of the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel is to get to 150,000 subs. Why? Because 150,000 subs, we're going to award a church, charity, or nonprofit $5,000 from this YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad. And we're going to crowdsource that church, charity, and nonprofit. So please, I would love some suggestions from you. But once we reach 150,000 subs, we're going to get $5,000 to the church, charity, nonprofit that you help nominate. So, all right, let's get into today's episode. So before I get into the five reasons why I'm glad I was broke, some of you might be thinking this. It's so easy for you to say you're grateful for being broke. I mean, after all, you're a millionaire now, right? I mean, you drive a Rolls Royce. You have all these different things that you got going on in your life. You don't know it's like to be actually broke. Well, to be quite frank, there was a period of my life uh, family immigrated here from the Philippines. I served eight years in the Marines where I wasn't a cash flow first generation millionaire. I was actually broke. I remember a very embarrassing time where I was in the military and I was, you know, broken, broken, broke. And um, I came back from the deployment, bought a new car. And then Thanksgiving came around and um, the unit was asking which Marines do need assistance for Thanksgiving for the families. You need turkey, do you need yams, you need you know cranberries, what do you guys need? You need stuffing, what do you guys need? And so I raised my hand. And so my unit first sergeant came by my house, which I was staying at base housing at Marine Corps Air Station of um, El Toro. I was stationed in Southern California at the time. And there's a brand new car sitting in my driveway. And so he pulls me to the side, Master Sergeant Johns, he pulls me to the side and says, Sapal, I need you to come outside real quick. Come out, come outside to your driveway. I said, what is that, Master Sergeant? I said, what's this? I said, it's my brand new car, Master Sergeant. We just came, came back from the deployment. All the Marines got brand new cars. I figured I need to buy a brand new car too as well. So he's, listen, you have a brand new car and you're paying 350 bucks a month for this car payment and you ask for free food that could have gone to some other Marine that was very, very well in need. You have a brand new car. You're paying 350 bucks for this car and you need help with your groceries for Thanksgiving. What's wrong with you, Marine? At that point, I was like, I never thought about it that way. So a large part about making money, about becoming a person that wants to be setting up to be financially free, financially independent, is knowing what you don't know. At that point, I realized that I was financially illiterate. Basically, I was financially stupid, and I asked myself this question. Where are my priorities? And who's helping me understand my financial priorities? At that time, I was just divorced. I was a single dad of three kids. And my life was just spiraling out of control. But why? I don't know how you guys feel about this, but because I was in a worse position, I actually was in the best position. Why? Because pain sharpens listening. So what are the five reasons? Number one, I'm glad I was broke because it forced me to be creative. There's an old saying there that says necessity is the mother of invention. I needed to recreate myself. I took the time to assess my life. I took a look at my bank accounts as much as I didn't want to look at my bank statements. 
I took a look at my credit card statements. I look at, took a look at my income. I took a look at where all the ways I was spending money and making money. I wrote it down. I listed down fancy words such as assets and liabilities and cash flow and all that stuff. I wrote it down. I had to visually see it. And then when I realized that I was not happy where I was at, nor happy where I was gonna be a year from now, three years from now, five years from now from this financial trajectory, I needed to educate myself. And I realized that yes, I'm not re-enlisting back into the military because I know next year I get promoted, per, for example, to staff sergeant. It's called an, it's an E6 on a military pay grade. And it's only an incremental uh, a pay increase. It was a small change forward. It was not gonna help me become financially free. So at that point, I'm open. At that point, I'm seeking options. At this point, I knew I needed to find a new career. As much as I loved serving the Marines, as much as I loved being uniform, as much as I loved and still love this country. I know I need to find ways because I love my family more. I love my children more. I wanna create options for my kids more. I wanna be there for my children physically, time-wise more. Big part of the reason why? Because I didn't have those things growing up and I wanted my children to be blessed this time around because I had a choice to say something about it. Which leads me into number two. It forced me to change. Being broke forced me to change. So basically, the way I processed it is what I was thinking, my education, my existing know-how got me here, but it's not gonna get me there. So I need to recreate myself. Because here's the bottom line, in my opinion, and this might be somewhat offensive to some of you, and I hope you don't take it that way. I hope this is a way for you to instigate change, for me to help you instigate change, is that you can't be the same person mentally and, 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 and thought process wise and maturity wise, at least from a, a career and business and financial standpoint than you were a year ago, three years ago, a five, uh, a five years ago. Because here's the thing, how many times have you heard somebody say at your job and ask you, how you doing? And you respond by saying, same old, same old, another day, another dollar. Or some of you guys even say, I'm living the dream, baby. I'm living the American dream. No, you're not. You're lying to yourself. And you keep lying to yourself, your subconscious mind hears it, picks it up and actually thinks it's real that you're living the American dream. And actually you're not. Your bank account doesn't say that. Your family doesn't say that. Your children doesn't say that. So you're at a divide, you're at a fork and road. Either you choose to change or you choose to stay the same, your choice. And instead of looking for change externally, lead me to number three, force me to change internally. It forced me to change myself to be more specific. It forced me to change my beliefs, forced me to change my current education, forced me to change the current way I manage finances, made my finances, made my income. It made me force the way I chose friends and associations and business partners. It forced me in a way to be careful who I ask questions from because I gotta ask myself, are they living the life that I wanna live? Are they setting an example for everyone around them to say, hey, this person inspires me to change because they're not just a talker of the word, but they're a doer of the word and they're leading by personal example. Those are the people I knew I needed to follow. And it forced me to continue to ask tougher and tougher questions. It forced me to ask more questions, questions that I didn't know to ask until I educated myself, until I experienced some level of, of activity and experience to say, okay, I learned to this level and I learned to this level. Let me figure out what I know and what I don't know. You know, oftentimes I can tell a lot about somebody when I run across them for the very first time by the quality of the questions and the depth of the questions they ask me because they're asking themselves the quality questions, the deeper questions for themselves. Fourth reason is contrast. Yes, contrast. You see, the valleys matured me, man, but the mountain tops inspired me. I mean, look at this view. Doesn't this view inspire you? It's kind of like uh, some people say the Corona life. I mean, just being able to hang out on the white sandy beach here, does that inspire you to be able to do that one day? Listen, I, when I was in the Marine Corps, we were fighting on beaches all the time. We were training beaches, we were running on boots on beaches, not with freaking you know, flip-flops. But what I'm saying is contrast allowed me to have a greater appreciation from what I'm receiving and gaining and improving each day to appreciate in value because now being broke gave me a baseline. Being able to be broke allowed me to taste the small steps and small wins of victory and those small victories were so much sweeter when I tasted it. And it made me want more. It made me want to excel more. It made me want to improve better, to improve myself mentally, obviously financially. Now it forced me to improve spiritually even. So many areas of my life I know I needed to improve if I kept asking myself those questions because I never, ever, ever 
wanted to feel broke ever again. And number five, it forced me to be in a position to always think about cash flow. That I wanted to protect my cash flow. I never wanted me in a position where somebody can boop, turn off a switch and I'm no longer in cash flowing because all the dreams and goals and hopes and plans I had planned for myself and positioned for me to accomplish in the future, they're cut off instantly the moment cash flow stops. And when I was in position broke, I knew right then and there that he or she that controls your income is in control of your life and the decisions you make in your life and the quality of life that you are living. So my question to my friends is who is in control of your income? If you're not happy with that question, then you need to make changes. Oftentimes people say, well, Matt, you know, money just brings more problems. Money brings more problems. Listen, I've had problems in two different scenarios. I've had problems without money being broke. And I've had money problems by having money. Which situation would you rather be in having problems? Would you rather have problems with money or problems without money? The choice is yours again. And one of my deep dive questions I ask myself, to ask myself currently what I'm doing, is if somebody gave me $50 million, would I still be doing what I'm currently doing right now? Because once you remove money as a variable from why you are doing what you're doing, then the pure decision of what you're doing and purpose will then come out. I remember watching this Netflix special as a documentary style, it's called The 1%. And uh, who actually produced this movie was one of the Johnson and Johnson um, heirs, okay? And he said this, um, his, his, his family, obviously the Johnson Johnson family is just uber wealthy. I mean, he started off uh, the, the beginning of this documentary by clowning people that were playing, uh, what's, that ga what's that game we play with? Uh, 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 cro croquet, it was croquet. You, they were hitting uh, balls with a hammer on the ground and he was clowning everybody because everybody was wearing white. And I said, well, he was like, why is everybody wearing white? Well, that's how you play croquet. You gotta wear white. It's like, excuse me, okay? So he mentions in that movie, in a documentary called The 1%, you can check it out yourself on Netflix. He says that having inherited money is one of the worst things you can have. Inheriting money, somebody giving you money, so therefore you don't have any financial concerns for the rest of your life, is one of the worst things one can ever experience. Why? because it gives you nothing to hope for and to fight for. Essentially, it robs you of the position of power, of, of, of personal empowerment, of personal determination, of self-improvement, of, of finding your purpose. It robbed him of that. And that's why he was making this documentary, because he had nothing else better to do but to clown the class of rich people, super rich people that he was a part of. And he goes on to say inside that movie, that it forces him to never want anything, that he no longer wanted to create anything, that the symptoms of success are often mistaken and overlooked for actually the cause. So my friends, if right now you're in a position, you say, Matt, I'm flat out broke. I've got no money. You got a choice. You can complain or you can be grateful. You can either buy into your faith that you're gonna get out of this, that you're gonna have a higher power, a higher calling, a higher layer of questions to ask yourself. You can buy into that or you can buy into your fear, you can blame, you can hide the shame, you can be in a position of self-pity, blaming other people, you can be in a position that you feel entitled to success, you're entitled to money, it's one of the worst positions to be in, that somebody owes you something. Because as a personal experience, the more I invested into buying into my faith, it easily started to overcome my fear. And then my life started to change. And I know if it can happen to me, I know it can happen to you. I mean, there's nothing fancy about my life, there's nothing fancy about my background, I spent eight years in the Marine Corps. Our family immigrated from the uh, our family immigrated from the Philippines. I have a 2.2 GPA in high school. I was never a student. I became a student because I knew money was on the table. Then I was properly motivated. But I had no inheritance, no rich family. I think the person that made the most amount of money in our family was my mom. She was a nurse, uh, and she was a very well paid nurse as well. She's working for the city hospital here in Chicago. Our family was all over the place in the United States of America. Not a six figure income earner. Not a seven figure earner amongst any of us, nor anybody I grew up with to show me the ropes or to even see as an example. And the more and more you start keeping, applying your desire, your prayers, your activity towards your faith, the things that get you out of the hole, you will start removing yourself from fear. Guys, my background comes from making $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marines. My paycheck every two weeks was 800 bucks, 800 to 850 bucks every two weeks. It's not a lot of money to be screaming at. There's a lot of money to force me to scream about. But once I started buying into my faith, realizing that I had the power to create change, that I had the power to self-develop, I had the power to 
have different decisions and uh, ways to make money in my life. And I was seeing different things and seeing different opportunities. And I took advantage of those opportunities. I started then cracking 25,000 in business, $50,000 business for myself, working for me. I said, you know, if I can start working for me, I can double this and I'm in control of when I double it. Next thing you know, my year three of being in a business, I started making $100,000 a year, 250,000 a year, $500,000 a year, became a cash flow millionaire, I'm about to eclipse $2 million in income, cash flow, all because I decided to buy into my faith to change and not my fear to keep in the same. And probably the most important thing here, the way I look at it, the perspective I'm at, is because there's so many, many people just like myself who is in that financial position too as well. Majority of America sadly is broke. 90% of America are either working for somebody or they're working for themselves. And they're still flat out broke. And if you're able to climb your way out of being broke to start having some form of financial freedom that your income outweighs your expenses by far and you become a first generation cash flow millionaire, think about how many people you can help that you're showing an example of success, that you're providing jobs, that you're creating opportunities, that day to day people get to shadow you, a person that overcame, a person that became victorious about being in a broken situation. But before I let you go, please check out this video right here, which was my original Facebook Live stating why I was glad I was broke. Please watch that out here. Kind of give you a quick throwback into what I used to look like and what I used to talk like. It's amazing what happens when you start changing and evolving. The second video right here I want you to check out is why millionaires never miss this life-changing opportunity. As I wrap up, guys, I remind you, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because our journey is to get to 150,000 subs because we're going to award a church charity or nonprofit that you and I crowdsource together and nominate and give them $5,000 once we reach 150,000 subs. So please help me in that endeavor. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page too at Money Smart Guy. With it being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, please drop me your thoughts, your comments, your, your follow-ups, your feedback. You agree with me or not agree with me? Are you on your own search? Don't just depend on me. Please do your own research, continue to self-study, to continue to self-improve. Let me know what you are discovering about yourself. That being said, guys, here from the beaches of Aruba, I'm your money smart guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.